Hi, and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. My name is Lisa Curcio. Today, we're gonna to use designer series paper to make birthday cards in five minutes. Now, if you're looking for quick card ideas that don't skimp on the classiness of a card, I have got you covered. Best part is I have five different cards to share with you today. Very important that you know all about that free project sheet. It's going to contain the pictures, the cutting dimensions, and the supplies. It's linked for you right now down in the video description below, and it'll be available to click on once tonight's premiere is over and we are through with the live chat. I also wanna make sure that you know how to log in so that you can chat with us. Go ahead and log in using your Gmail account, which is required by YouTube. You're gonna see myself and Gina Curcio Holly there. Gina is my daughter, an avid stamper, and we are here to interact with you, get to know you, so please reach out. And of course, here to answer your questions. Now, a couple things that are really important coming up that I wanna make sure you know all about. If you love online events that include a fun fold, you are going to love session number two for the online stamping retreat. It's going to take place on May 25th here in the US and May 26th abroad. You can get all the information and join our free wait list with no obligation over at onlinestampingretreat.com. $45 is gonna get yourself access to a full day of live demonstrations that are recorded that give you lifetime access. And guess what? A huge color PDF tutorial with all the projects we share. There are 36 total and you're going to love this event. So head over there and get all the information. Also, we are in the midst of Stampin' Up's Last Chance products. Now, some of these are discounted, but guess what? These are retiring products. They are only available while supplies last through April 30th. So make sure you go through the online store and look for your favorites and grab them before they're gone. All right, we're ready. Let's go ahead and let's get started. We're gonna start with the card base for this card. I'm using Misty Moonlight. Please keep in mind that you can adapt these to any colors any stamps and any dies that you like. That's the best part about these easy five minute birthday cards. I also wanna let you know, just because of the length of what I'm gonna teach you tonight with five cards, I did do a little bit of die cutting ahead of time, but I promise you, you can make these cards within five minutes. This particular card base is four and a quarter by 11 and I did score it in half. I'm gonna go ahead and align those edges because none of us scores and cuts perfectly. I'm gonna use my bone folder for that nice crisp edge. And I'm gonna add a layer of designer series paper. Now, while this probably seems pretty simple, we're gonna ump this up just a little bit. The one thing about Stampin' Up! papers that I love is that they are double-sided, so you have lots of options. One side actually is going to include a theme. The other one is quite generic so that you can use it all year round in all kinds of projects. My Stampin' Seal Plus is very, very strong, so I like to make sure I use my silicone craft sheet underneath it. That's gonna protect your work surface against the adhesives, glue, and liquid glue sticking to it. Absolutely love that. Gonna make sure I've got it going the right way, but guess what? I'm gonna turn it horizontally, so my crease is here. I find I have better luck of centering this layer if I turn it horizontally, because I have a better vision all the way around the card, and then we'll just press that in place. Use those dies to your advantage. They make quick and beautiful cards. This is from the Beautiful Balloons die set. I've gone ahead and I've pulled out some pieces from this. If you're wondering what this is, I didn't use it on tonight's card, but I wanna call your attention to it. It makes a fantastic fringe for your cards. Lots and lots of fun. I've die cut two balloons here. And I do wanna connect these a little bit before we get started, just to make it easier to use them as one piece. I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna flip that over. I'm going to add a little adhesive to that one side. Once I have an idea on placement, I can go ahead and just stick those together. This is going to make it a lot easier to use. Now this next step is going to require that we go ahead and we mount it to the card base next. And I'm going to be using my dimensionals. You can see they're a beloved item here in the studio. I'm going to go ahead and place them randomly around the outside edges because I want to make sure that this is well balanced. And then we're going to go ahead and remove those paper backings. I'm using the take your pick tool. I love this because of the putty tip. You can pick up sequins and small pieces of paper. And I love that paper piercing tool attachment. It helps me remove those paper backings from the dimensionals because of my arthritic hands. It makes it very difficult to do this way. It dials out and it comes with several attachments. This is a spatula and you can see that it's well loved, but it gets up underneath my images and helps me release the cardstock if I have a mistake. It also comes with a dual-ended stylus tool. I swear by this. 
because it even includes a putty tip refill. Let's go ahead and take this and I'm going to adhere this now to the card base near the top. I have two pieces of white baker's twine. I'm gonna slide this up underneath the neck of the balloon. I'm gonna take those raw ends and we are just simply going to make a simple tie. I chose to make a knot. You don't have to if you don't want to, that's entirely up to you. But I find baker's twine kind of thin and I find that if I don't make a knot, it has a tendency of wanting to unravel. One of these is going to come down, obviously. Now this one is a lot shallower, but you can go ahead and do the exact same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and just tie this one on as well. Now, if you're thinking that's gonna slow things down, guess what? There's another way you can improvise. Make a knot in the twine and use a glue dot and make your life even easier. But I liked the way this made it look really real. Now that I have those tied, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna give those ends a little bit of a trim. I'm gonna let them hang straight for right now, but let's move on to the next step. We're gonna bring in the silicone craft sheet for this. And I brought in the wanted to say dies. I think these are really undiscovered inside the annual catalog. And don't forget that last chance list is out, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure you don't miss out on any of your favorites. There is a halo and the script for the various greetings that are in here. So we have happy birthday, we have celebrate, we have feel better soon, and this one says you're too kind. And I love that you can mix and match these to make them work on various cards. I went ahead and I die cut the halo to match the base of my cardstock. I also die cut the actual script. Now you can use adhesive sheets, but to be quite honest with you, I have trouble getting a little backing off and you have to be very careful with the delicate script that you don't extend or stretch the letters too far because otherwise they won't fit inside of here. Instead, I'm gonna use my favorite liquid glue and that is inside my Precision Glue Press. I absolutely love this product. I have it linked for you on my website under shop my favorite things, craft room favorites, and just scroll there. I love this for several reasons. You can put any liquid glue inside. Arthritic hands, I was really skeptical about the pump because moving the trigger I thought was gonna be really, really hard for me. Watch my fingers. Do you see how little you have to do to get a little bit out? I'm gonna lay that down and I'm just grabbing my little reverse tweezers here. These are the ones that are part of the embossing tool additions kit. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue here and there. And because it comes out so thin and my liquid glue that's sold in my online store is what's in here is really, really strong, I'm not worried about where it's going. I know it's gonna stick. If you get too heavy handed, here's a tip. Tap it on your silicone crash sheet. That's gonna make sure that it's not gonna to ooze too much for you. And look, perfect placement every single time. We're gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing here. Again, you're gonna see that I'm not covering every little area. I'm just adding a little bit of glue here and there to make sure that it's going to stick and not lift. There's nothing worse than a card that falls apart while it's being mailed. And then we're gonna go ahead and just line this up right over that halo outline as well. And we can use those tweezers because this is a little bit longer to press that in place. Now it's gonna dry very quickly and I'm gonna flip that over and I'm gonna come back here to my dimensionals. I'm gonna place those here behind the solid areas of my greeting. I'm gonna go ahead and take this and I'm using my sticky scissors. Those are the ones here with the little red ribbon on the handles. Everybody knows don't use those on the good stuff because they're gunked up. And this is a great way for you to just save up on your dimensional investments. Go ahead and cut up those areas while they're on the paper backing, and then you can use them on your projects. These smaller areas are perfect for those small sections here. Once you have that adequately covered, let's go ahead and let's pierce those dimensionals and take off those paper backings. This is now where we're gonna tack down the twines. Just get them positioned where you want them. I'm gonna start at the top and kind of pull down. So that I'm creating some tension on that twine with the dimensional. Once I'm happy about the placement, we're gonna tack that down. So the dimensional is doing all the work here. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna cut these a little bit shorter to my liking. And there you have it, we have our first card. And the reason I love this, doesn't matter what gender you're sending it to, young or old, it's perfect for everyone. All right, let's move on to our next one. Now for this next card, we're actually gonna work on the layer that's going to go on the card base. And this is very vanilla cardstock. And I wanna give a huge shout out to my customer, Birdie, and thank her for this layout idea. This is something she shared with me and I couldn't wait to share it with you. 
I'm using the designer series paper from Let's Go Fishing. And these are all small squares of designer series paper scraps. And again, with Stampin' Up, they are double-sided, so you have lots and lots of options. Now, this one, I want you to watch me first, and then you can stamp along with me from home. I've got a couple tips on how you can easily lay this out. What I recommend that you do first is you take your pieces and you get an idea of how you want them placed. I know this is gonna sound crazy, but what's worked really well for me is to have light, dark, light, and then we're also gonna do the same thing going down. So we're gonna go a little darker, a little darker yet. Gonna add in another shade here, and then we're gonna work across the bottom. So I'm gonna add a plaid here and another piece here. So there's some contrast along the way. So light, dark, light, dark, dark. So the focal point's gonna start looking more balanced. Now, before you start going crazy, sticking this down, let me give you a couple tips. The first piece that you lay down is gonna become the map for the rest of this layout. You can work in either corner. It is entirely up to you. I'm gonna start in my top left. I'm gonna flip that over and I'm gonna add adhesive to my two outside edges. Now, if your pattern has a direction, please keep that in mind. I am looking to keep a margin all the way around. So I'm looking at the side and the top to do my very best to try to make them as even as possible. Once I'm happy with them, I'm gonna lay that down. I'm gonna slide all these pieces out of the way just to give you a visual of how you should begin to get an idea of the placement. But to make sure this is as straight as you possibly can get it, a T ruler is the best tip I can give you. You're gonna love that the outside edge is gonna butt up to the cardstock and it's gonna allow you to make this as straight as possible. I'm gonna go ahead and take this piece now and I'm looking for about the same margin of cardstock all the way around the outside edges as I have on this side. Once I'm happy with it, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna press that in place. Now it's just a matter of filling in the next square. So I'm gonna turn that upside down. There's that designer series paper reverse that we've talked about. And then once again, using that T ruler, we're gonna come up against the edge and we're gonna take our image being cognizant of the direction and we're gonna tuck this down to the ruler. I am looking now between these two areas to try to make it as symmetrical as possible. That's the hardest part. The rest now is really, really simple. Let's go ahead and let's take our next pattern and we're gonna add adhesive. We can turn it and do the exact same thing by using our ruler this way, but I want you to keep in mind that we have turned it. So if you have a pattern with a direction, you're gonna to wanna to be cognizant of that. And now what I'm looking to do is to add my next panel. And I'm looking to try to keep the same amount of space as I had between the previous top panels. Once I'm happy, we can tack those down. I'm gonna work my way down just visually. I'm looking at the outside edges here, doing my best to align them, and then I'm gonna tack that in place. I've got my next one already with adhesive and we are gonna do the exact same thing here. Now you can go back to the T-square, but I'm gonna be honest with you. There's nothing like a fun card that just means you went for it. And you know what? It's handmade and it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Have a little fun with it. Just get a visual straightness to your card and you're gonna be in great shape. This area right here is where we're gonna place a greeting. Now I've done the greeting beforehand, but I'm gonna add a little something to this. The happiest of birthdays came from the stamp set throughout the year. Again, check that last chance list. I've created a small layer for it, and we're gonna add our adhesive. This now is gonna get mounted here with a narrow margin all the way around. I'm gonna flip this over and add more adhesive. This now is going to fit inside of this area. From the Gone Fishing Bundle, the stamps and the coordinating dies, we're gonna create a little image for this masculine card or for the outdoorsman in your life. I'm using Mossy Meadow Ink, and this is the beauty of Stampin' Up! products, is the color coordination. I have my fish image here, it's the outline, and I'm going to ink it up and I'm gonna stamp it here. I'm gonna bring in some scrap grid paper here because we're gonna do a little fun something for the inside of this fish. There is a solid image here that fills the front end of this fish. Well, while you can go ahead and do it one color, I thought I'd teach you something really cool that you can do with your solid stamps. I'm gonna start with Calypso Coral and I'm choosing these colors because they're part of the designer series paper. We are going to ink up the front portion of this fish. We're gonna stamp it off on our scratch paper to make the ink lighter. 
I'm now bringing in the Misty Moonlight ink and from the shallow end of the ink pad, which is here, I'm going to turn it and I'm gonna very slightly overlap it and stamp off. This now is gonna get centered here. Lots of firm, even pressure, and then you're gonna lift. You're gonna get that really fun two-toned image. Because this bundle has an amazing set of coordinating dies, I went ahead and I die cut that fish ahead of time. Literally took under a minute, which gave us this. Now, before we go any further, let's go ahead and put this on the card base first. It's Mossy Meadow, four and a quarter by 11. I'm gonna come over that end with my bone folder once again. We are going to flip this upside down and we're gonna add our adhesive. We're gonna take this and once again, I am turning it horizontally to make it easier for my hand. My open side is here on the right. I'm gonna hold it and hover it over the card base to make sure that I have a nice narrow margin that's equal, the very best I can, all the way around. We're gonna come back here to our fish image. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that these are well balanced once again for mailing. This now is going to get positioned here. And there we go, we have our very simple card. Experiment with different size sizes and shapes to get different kinds of layouts. Thank you, Bertie, for this great idea. Same size for the card base again. Please keep in mind that you can always cut your paper five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter, and you're gonna have the exact same size A2 card base. For this one, I wanted a very subtle layer on layered look, and I use the Mary Medley embossing folder. I went ahead and I did that ahead of time, took seconds to put that through. It's a beautiful dynamic 3D embossing folder, which is gonna give you a fantastic deep impression. Because I know oftentimes my adhesive is too strong for this beautifully conditioned paper. This is where I'm gonna bring in my precision glue press once again, and I'm gonna come right around the outside edges. One of the other reasons I absolutely love this precision glue press is because of the stand. You're gonna see there's a red stopper down there at the bottom. And when it comes into contact with it inside the carriage, it literally is going to eliminate any clogging. It is a game changer product. I am looking just to center this again on the card base to have equal margins. Instead of rubbing from the front, I'm gonna recommend you turn it over and you go back along the outside just to make sure that you don't de-emboss that raised embossed finish. This is another fantastic card layout that you can use with your scrap designer series papers. You can alter the size of what I'm doing and of course the colors and style to anything that you'd like, but don't throw away these small pieces because wait till you see what we're going to do. I'm going to bring in a square piece of cardstock and I'm going to rearrange these onto this square. I'm gonna flip it upside down, and just for the sake of the video, I'm gonna go ahead and just use my adhesive. I'm gonna turn this to make it easier for my hand, be cognizant of the direction if you want it a certain way. And then you're gonna line up the top and outside edges the very best that you can. Once that's in place, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna determine in the next side that you're gonna use. And I want that colorful side for this one. Let's go ahead and use our adhesive this way this time. And you are gonna butt these up right against each other. Again, looking at the top and the sides. Do you see how this one's a little bit longer? Yeah, none of us cuts perfectly, so I'm gonna give you a great tip. Let's do this last one, which is going to go here. Let's go ahead and let's add our adhesive to the wrong side. By the way, this paper came from the Lighter Than Air Designer Series paper pack. It's one of my favorites. Now that these are all in place, I want you to flip the cardstock over. Do you see the difference? Take your sticky scissors and you're gonna use that cardstock as your guide and you're simply gonna cut away the excess. We're gonna take this now, we're gonna flip it upside down. We're gonna come back to those dimensionals that we cut up and we're gonna make good use of those pieces. You wanna make sure again that this is well balanced. You're gonna see me work primarily in the corners to make sure we've got a good balance of pieces here. And of course, we wanna make sure that we balance this in the middle. We're gonna go ahead and remove those paper backings. This now is gonna come back here to the card base. I'm gonna go just slightly below center and we're gonna tack that in place. Now this is going to need a greeting and it's also gonna need some embellishments. I've got a piece of basic white cardstock here and I've brought in a greeting in my Memento Black ink pad. This came from Charming Sentiments stamp set and I actually designed this stamp set with Stampin' Up! for my $1 million sales achievement several years ago. Now, back in the day, the dies were not named the same thing as the stamp set. They have since changed that. 
So the coordinating dies are called sentiment silhouettes. Now you might be thinking, how are you going to know which one of those dies fits the greeting? And you know what? Gina and I thought the same thing. So Gina said, mom, we've got an idea. Let's go ahead and photograph all the images and I'm going to make a template and we're going to make it available to everybody for free. Let me show it to you. It's a digital download on my website under shop and it's completely free. The red designates the top of the die. In addition to that, it's going to give you the name of the greeting. So at very quick glance, you're going to be able to see that this shape goes with these words. It is a template and it is a game changer on using these types of dies and stamps together. I've got the happy birthday greeting here and I'm going to ink it up with my memento ink. I'm going to stamp that here on my scrap cardstock. But I get a lot of questions about this because obviously these dies are going to slip and slide, which means you're not going to get a perfect die cut image. The post-it labeling and cover up tape is a game changer and we have shared it many times here on the YouTube channel and you all rave about it. This is linked for you on my website under shop, my favorite things, and then hit that red little button that says view more craft room favorites. It's a dispenser. You can rip it as small or leave it as large as you'd like, but what you can do is you can line up the image perfectly the way that you want it and then you're going to tape it right across the die. This is so fantastic, you're going to notice that it doesn't shift so that when it becomes die cut, you're going to have a perfect die cut image or greeting every time. Don't throw these pieces away even after you use them. You're going to find that you're going to get multiple uses from this tape you can attach it right to the handle of your die cutting machine or put it right back here on the cartridge. We're going to take that greeting now and we're going to flip that upside down. And here's where those little ends we cut up are going to be just a huge blessing for this project because they're going to fit right inside of here. But I got more good news for you. Just in case you've used up all these and you don't want to cut up more, we have what are called mini dimensionals. Check these out. They're the same thing as these, but they're a lot smaller and you're going to find because of their shape, they're going to fit even better in some of those little tight spaces. Again, we're going to remove those backings. We're going to take that greeting now and we are going to layer it in the center. It needs a bow, doesn't it? To make it look more like a gift box. Now I use the bow maker linked in my craft room favorites once again for you just to make a multi-loop bow. I love these because it just creates so much fullness and I cannot for the life of me do these by hand. So we're going to use a couple glue dots back here because it's a sizable bow, but it's not too heavy for mailing. And I'm just revealing that here, the glue dot between those layers. We want to make sure that no glue dots are showing. So wrap any excess to the back side. And this is going to go right here, top and center, and press that in place. I thought it had a little bit of a feminine touch, don't you think? So I wanted to add some bling. I'm going to bring in some regular silver rhinestones because it's going to play up the silver edge in this beautiful ribbon. I'll hold it up for you so that you can see it better. I'm going to go ahead and place one of those down here. I'm going to take another one and I'm going to place that on a slight angle. And I love using these because they already have glue dots on the back, which means my take your pick tool is going to lift them perfectly. And let's put another one up there to draw up your eye. Give them a good push to make sure that that adhesive is stuck in place. And there you go, a very simple birthday card that you can make in five minutes. All right, let's move on to our next one. Our next card has an amazing shabby chic feel with a little bit of a vintage flair. This is a regular A2 card base and it's basic white. And I'm going to go ahead and score that in half. And here's another great tip for you. Cut the designer series paper to cover the entire front of your card base. Patterns like this one are amazing simply because it's subtle enough but has some sparkle to it. Let's go ahead and add our adhesive to this one. Because the card is already horizontal, I'm going to keep that in place. I find that putting a contrasting piece of color to your cardstock under the bottom is going to ensure better placement. So I'm going to go ahead and line up the top and the sides to cover the entire card base. Right before you join me, I pulled out one of my favorite tag dies. This is the Taylor Made Tags. Again, don't miss that last chance list. You're going to love the fact that this die not only die cuts and multiple sizes for layering, you're going to get incredible little grommet pieces that you can decorate the circle openings on these dies if you choose. I did one of those ahead of time from the same designer series paper package. This package is called Nature's Sweetness. 
I've got my die here already filled out and ready to go, but I could not resist using one of those little grommets. I used distressed gold paper for this. And you might be thinking, oh my gosh, what are we going to do about attaching that? It's really simple. We're going to come back here to our glue press. We're going to put a little tiny few dots all the way around that circle. Just make it easy on yourself. And then we're going to attach this just like so using that take your pick tool to lift it. The multi-purpose liquid glue is very strong. It's going to dry very, very quickly. This designer series paper has another incredible feature. It has all types of beautiful foiled leaves and kind of vintagey feel type florals to it. I literally just cut this out from the designer series paper. Now I have another one here and I'm going to do this with you. Many of you are intimidated by fussy cutting. Now I don't have the dies to this particular suite of products, but I didn't want that to discourage me. So I thought, let's get those scissors out. Something we learned to do when we were kids in elementary school, I know I can do it again. So I wanna give you some important tips about what we call fussy cutting. Cut your paper smaller around the image you're going to cut. I'm gonna use my scissors as a guide, but you're gonna also notice that I'm not going to move the scissors. I'm going to move the paper. So I'm turning the paper, but keeping the scissors as straight as I possibly can. Don't feel that you've got to go between every single little nook and cranny, especially when your card base that it's going to layer on is the same color. That's going to make more sense to you in just a moment. So I'm just working my way around the image. Do you notice too how I'm not cutting directly on the stamp line? None of us cuts perfectly. So you're going to need a little self-forgiveness but you don't want to distort the lines on the image itself on the designer series paper. So just make sure you work around it. If an image is in the way, push it back to reveal the piece you need, make it smaller, and then work your way inside. When you're finished, just come all the way down to the bottom. Chances are the bottom is typically going to be hidden if you're going to be doing some layering. If there's an area you don't like or it doesn't look smooth enough, just go back and fix it. Now I went back and I trimmed it up just a little bit. So this is what we've got. We're going to use these two pieces along with a greeting on this tag. Now for the greeting, I chose phrases for all and I'm using this happy birthday greeting. Now since we've already done some stamping before, I went ahead and I did that. And I stamped it in the same color as the base of this designer series paper, which is called Pebbled Path. I want to show you a great tip. Let's go ahead and let's lay out our tag. And I'm going to go ahead and lay out the leaves. I'm going to put one here and maybe one here because I want to layer them. I'm going to hold this right over the top on how I'm going to eventually want this to land. This is a great time to kind of manipulate your pieces if you want to change them up a little bit. But you're always thinking to yourself, how am I going to get it to stay like this so that I have that placement that I figured from the beginning? Here's a great tip. Grab yourself a piece of press and seal from the kitchen. You're going to know the side that you need to use because it's going to stick together like this one is. So I'm going to turn that upside down. You're going to want to work fairly quickly because as it comes closer to the cardstock, it's going to want to be staticky. So I'm going to put it right over the top. I'm going to press it in place. Obviously, the happy birthday is not going to stick to the press and seal, but that's fine. Let me show you what we're going to do. We're going to lift this and we're going to flip it over. You can see here now where these areas connect, and this is the time where you can add your adhesive, or in my case today, it's going to be dimensionals. I am literally going to connect these so that when I lift these, they're going to remain together. It also does twofold. It's allowing me too to place the dimensionals on the backing without having to remove my original placement. It's a great hack for card making, and one I know that you're going to find really, really helpful. Now, while this is flat, Let's go ahead and let's balance out the rest of those corners so that we can attach this tag. I'm making sure that this is well balanced. I'm going to give this a good press to make sure it's in place and I'm very carefully going to remove the press and seal. We know that this is loose, but we can go ahead and remove it for now. I want to add any ribbon or twine now before we tack it down to make it a lot easier for us. And that's where I'm bringing in this. This is one of the in color twines that matches just beautifully. Now, some of you ask me, how do you get that pretty end when you loop it through? So let me teach you how. You're going to meet up your ends the best you can and create a loop. You're going to make that loop as skinny as you can, and you're going to put the loop through the hole, 
and then you're going to open up the loop and you're going to bring the raw ends through the loop. Now this part is really important. You don't want to pull both ends at the same time when you're working with paper because you can risk ripping the shallow area here. So I'm going to say pull one at a time to bring up the tension. Not only that, it's going to help keep your ends as even as possible. Once you have them where you want them, you're good to go and you've got that beautiful finish on the front of your tag. Let's go ahead and let's remove those backings. With the paper backings removed, I'm going to work in an unusual area. I'm going to come down here near the bottom right. You want to make sure that you keep your leaves within the perimeter of the card base that's going to fit inside the envelope. Whether you adhere this or you use dimensionals is entirely up to you. We've successfully used all those edges. Great for saving some money. And now what I'm going to go ahead and do is just add some more here to the back side. This added dimension to the center of this tag is absolutely stunning for the card. But I didn't want to stop there because I thought there were a lot of white areas. I'm bringing in the pastel adhesive backed sequins. You'll see that there's several colors and here's what's great. There are several sizes as well. So let's take one of the larger ones and we're going to work that here. I'm going to move one over to the smaller ones and we're going to work that up on a close angle. And then let's add one more and draw your eye down just a little bit over to the side. Now, if the ends of your jute are a little bit too long for you, go ahead and just give them a little bit of a trim so it'll be easier to get this card in and out of the envelope. All right, we're ready to move on to our last five minute birthday card using designer series paper. Here's another great card for scraps. Knight of Navy cardstock, typical A2 size, five and a half by eight and a half. Designer series paper we just talked about really lays over the top of the card really, really well. But sometimes with a busy pattern, you might need to break up that color. This is where a thin layer of a simple color like white or vanilla maybe even black come into play. You're going to see how this comes together in just a moment. I'm going to turn it horizontally. This beautiful double-sided paper is from the Countryside in Designer Series Paper Pack. Stunning, stunning, stunning paper. If you love blues, you are going to be good to go. I'm going to go ahead and layer this as well by adding additional adhesive to the back side. We got our card base. I am going to turn it horizontally, being cognizant of my pattern because I have a better chance of getting equal margins all the way around. Now that we have that in place, let's talk about the focal point and the importance of this thin basic neutral layer. I'm mimicking the bottom two layers here, the Knight of Navy and the basic white. Let's go ahead and let's put these two layers together. This is what we're going to build upon. And again, this is where Gorgeous Designer Series Paper does all the work for you. I took scraps from this exact same package and I cut them in a size that would work complementary to that basic white square. Again, be cognizant of direction and don't be afraid to mix and match. Stampin' Up's Designer Series paper packages have multiple patterns and colors that work beautifully together, so just experiment. I'm going to take these two and I'm going to work them on top of this panel. I'm going to add adhesive to both of the back sides. With my adhesive in place, I'm going to be cognizant of the direction. You're going to want to leave that very small margin of cardstock showing around the outside edges. So I'm doing my best to mimic that just eighth of an inch that we had allocated above. And I'm going to do the exact same thing here near the top. Here's a great tip for you. If you never cut perfectly, don't worry, either do I. You can see I'm going to leave a small white margin between these two layers because guess what? Like you, I don't cut perfect, but look at how pretty this is. Without adding another piece of paper, you've created a faux border. If you cut perfectly, butt them up together, which is what's represented inside your project sheet. Here I want to introduce you to these beautiful paper butterfly accents. These were brand new with Stampin' Up! this year, and I have fallen in love with them. Let me take them out of the package so you can get a really quick look at these. They are laser cut. You have several different types of butterflies and positions here. Fantastic, because they can be turned into any direction. Best of all, you can take these beautiful laser cuts and you can color them with daubers, blending brushes, alcohol markers, you name it. For the sake of this quick five-minute card, we're leaving it white.
We are going to speed things up by adding this right to the square. And guess what? We're coming right back here to that precision glue press. Once again, I'm not worried about covering every little area because the multi-purpose liquid glue inside my little bottle is very, very strong. Now you might be thinking with these antennas, how is that going to happen? Just drag the needle tip over it. If you feel everything is too thick, just like we've done before, give it a little bit of a tap. You are going to place this in the center. I am looking to use the wings of this butterfly image to delineate some separation. So do you see how here it's running across the bottom? We're going to do one more thing and this card is done. Now I did do this ahead of time. It literally took me under a minute. I stamped a small greeting in Versamark Eek. I added some white embossing powder. Heat set it very, very quickly because it's so small. Just made some banner tips with my scissors. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create even more separation. Let's go ahead and let's flip this upside down. And for this, we're going to go ahead and use the mini dimensionals. I'm going to start in the center, again, making sure they're well balanced for mailing and we'll remove those backings. This now is going to go right here across the center of that butterfly. We are going to flip this upside down. We're going to come back to those dimensionals that are full size and we're going to balance this panel as well. Regardless of what colors, what dyes, what stamps, any coloring medium if you choose. The layouts I've shared with you tonight are going to be extremely versatile. Quick five minute birthday cards do not have to be ugly nor do they have to be boring. Break out those pretty designer series papers and let them do all the work for you. There we go, we've got our last card. These are the five cards that we've created together tonight. This one, and of course, the little shabby chic, a little vintage card here using the designer series paper patterns and your fussy little cutting scissors. And then of course, we've got this one, our faux gift box and some ribbon. Any colors make it masculine, great for the kids as well. And of course, the one with the layout that Bertie shared with me. Great masculine outdoorsy card. And the one we started using your dies and those script die sets for words for a really cute and fun birthday card. Now, as always, I'd love to know your favorite. Do me a favor, pop down right now in the comments. We are here in the live chat and let us know which one you prefer. Your feedback is so important to me when I'm designing. I try really hard to come up with a variety of styles and colors to expound your creativity and give you all kinds of new inspiration. Now, while you're here, I want to make sure you know all about this. Stamp Studio memberships. Memberships here at the studio have become huge and we would love to include you. Head over to my website and click on memberships near the top. There you're going to find details about level one and level two. Level one, $5 a month, and I'm going to send you a tutorial right to your inbox every Monday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern time. The cards I designed for the membership program are exclusive, which means you will never see them anywhere else. I'm gonna give you multiple pictures, cutting dimensions, supplies, and step-by-step -step instructions. It doesn't matter what country you live in, and guess what? If you're a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I've got you covered. Go ahead and use these projects and the tutorials for classes or even inspiration of your own. They are not watermarked. For those of you that want a little bit more, check out Level 2, which includes a monthly fun fold card, product prize patrol, and of course a discount in my PDF tutorial library. Before you go, if you have enjoyed tonight's video, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button here on YouTube, which is a like. It helps me immensely. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so right now by clicking the subscribe button the bell icon and the word all. Then you'll be assured not to miss anything I share here on YouTube because they'll send you reminders. Thank you so much for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great night, everyone. Bye-bye.